there is increasing awareness and interest in the possibility that autoimmunity is playing a, a key and important role in ME and across the spectrum of ME, CFS, and fibromyalgia as well. And although fibromyalgia in its own setting is not typically considered autoimmune, in the last year, there have been several very good papers published showing that patients who meet fibromyalgia criteria may have a small fiber polyneuropathy that is, has been proven with skin biopsies. And these types of uh, polyneuropathies are generally difficult to detect with other methods. So uh, EMG or nerve conduction or even neurologic exams may not show uh, abnormal findings. So this is very important because small fiber polyneuropathies are usually either viral or autoimmune. And there has also been a number, have been a number of studies with interest in glial cell activation, which is a neuroimmune cell or part of the innate immunity of the brain, and the role those cells may play in pain and fibromyalgia along uh, with other roles. So uh, those are uh, some of the interesting studies related to pain. Um, we do see many autoimmune diseases comorbid with MECFS, including Hashimoto's disease and celiac, um, and uh, peripheral and autonomic neuropathies that we're just starting to have more awareness of. And uh, I have a, a special interest in a study published this year showing autoimmune antibodies in patients with POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which um, provides an explanation for uh, the dysfunction of alpha and beta receptors and how it would play a role in the presentation of POTS. And this is an important subset in my clinic, uh, primarily the younger patients who develop post-viral fatigue, and then instead of recovering from their viral illness, go on to develop this dysautonomia. And it's very approachable uh, and treatable, even without directly treating the autoimmune disease. But hopefully someday we can address treatment more specifically um, at that autoimmune component. So many people ask about the difference between ME and fibromyalgia. Uh, I don't really consider them separate conditions per se, they're case definitions. And fibromyalgia, the fibromyalgia criteria actually come closer to meeting uh, uh, what I would consider a better standard for diagnostic criteria. And that is that they're easy to remember. And, uh, and the, initially the 1990 criteria were simply widespread chronic widespread pain and tenderness uh, incorporated into the diagnostic criteria. So people with ME and ME-CFS can meet fibromyalgia criteria if they have widespread pain and tenderness. Uh, and that is, so it's an overlap and they're not mutually exclusive conditions. Many people though who have widespread pain um, that would be considered fibromyalgia are not as sick as patients with ME, do not have as much uh, post-exertional malaise. Uh, they have uh, many patients with fibromyalgia alone can exercise and increase their stamina. And as they, uh, they may have pain amplification from attempting to exercise, but when you control the pain, they can usually increase their functioning and their stamina, which is really different than what I would consider patients with ME. So um, there's some overlap and there's also some confusion about what these cases definitions mean what the criteria actually mean. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube. Tweet naar @mecvs vereniging of mail naar wvp@me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chat sessies.